see him now, you believe in him, and are filled with an inex inexpressible and glorious joy. For you're receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray that you would just speak to us today by the power of your Holy Spirit, and just allow your Holy Spirit just to move in us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Sorry, y'all get it. I was listening to a comedian, and I was telling him to show him this other night, and the night before last, night, night before last, and she was funny. She's like a six foot two uh, comedian. I can't think of her name's Jeannie, first name, but Christian comedian. But she said that she calls her husband left brain, and uh, and when she said, "Do not ever send your husband to the store," and he said, "I did this once with a list," and she went through explaining because she said that they when she's on the road and out of town stuff, when somebody passes away, she gives them one of these pound cakes that she makes and puts in a freezer, and therefore she can take it and give it to the family for comfort and counsel. So she ran out of pound cakes, and she sent her husband to the store to get more stuff. Said after a long period of time, he came home. And he said he came in the house and he was just frustrated because he was supposed to be going somewhere else and the store took a lot longer than what he intended. So when he came in with the first two bags he had you know her ingredients, two of this, two of that, and three of this, four of that. Then when he came in with seven five pound bags of sugar she realized she made a mistake that outside her list that she put six bag of flour, seven <laughs> bag of sugar. She realized her mistake that her left brain husband had read it not as a list, but as the ingredients that she wanted. And as he came huffing in the door with all these bags and so never send your husband to the store with that kind of list. I find that in this season that most all of us, there's something that's going to bring you joy somewhere. Some of you, it's going to be when you finally get through with your Christmas list. When it's all said and done, I can remember uh, the days before stores were open and before they closed down and they wouldn't have anything open but the shop of snack maybe on Christmas Eve day. Now you can shop all the way up. Now it's pushing to 8 and 9 o'clock you know, on Christmas Eve. You always had to get everything in, had to get everything that had to happen. The only thing you knew was going to be open was the gas station on the corner, and then you bless that person that they worked that day if you had to go grab an extra roll or something. But most of us, there's something that brings joy to your heart during the season. And until you get to that point, most of the time your joy is running in incremental levels. Because joy is something that flows. It's not just something that's stagnant, but it is something that flows. And when you have joy in your life, even as Mindy was saying, it's not about your happenings around you, but Christmas should be that season of joy. We see in the assault that goes on Christmas where we're still trying to have the joy without Christ. Have you ever seen that? I mean, I saw something posted the other day. It said that you can have Christmas trees for $5 or holiday trees for $10. I find that in this time where the world is trying to secularize a holiday and try to make it palatable to everyone to where you won't offend the Jewish people or the Muslim people or whatever, we're finding that the joy is slipping away from this season and it is becoming a commercialization of a nightmare. We find ourselves that when you start talking about, and I know as I was talking and I'll pick on Dewey, he says Merry Christmas to a lot of people. And God bless you because he believes that's a part of what we are called to do. That we do spread that kind of joy wherever we go. So when we speak to people during this season, I would encourage you that when people tell you happy holidays or happy Kwanzaa, as Scott would say, uh, be sure and say Merry Christmas. I say Scott because he always says happy Kwanzaa. And everybody's like, what is, what, what are you doing? But we find ourselves in the midst of a season without Christ will be a season without that joy, which is the element of joy in any Christmas season. You've got to have Christ in the midst of Christ mass, meaning that celebration of him coming to this earth, of him being a babe born in a manger, of being the God of all creation, sending his son into this world that we might know salvation. 
So I find there are three things in this season, and, I, and you can do it however you want to, but I use G's for this. You'll find joy in the number one thing is the gathering. Now, most of us find joy in the gathering of our homes and stuff. And if you gather together, then you'll find there's some great joy. You get together at parties like you wouldn't normally do. You get together with people at work. You get together with people at your business and different places or different home gatherings. But here's where the gathering of time came together. And you'll find when Jesus was born in the manger, when we sing that song, that away in the manger, where our hopes and fears of all the years were met in thee tonight. And so what we find is that people were waiting on this very event in which we live on this side of it, and we're finding that most of the people don't understand the joy of that event, of what took place, the gathering of those people. Mindy shared with us Wednesday night, the gathering of the manger, the individuals around the manger. And you see all those people that are gathering, and you hear the angels gathering in the heavenlies and telling them, saying, good news, I got great joy that's coming, great joy is here. You see that, but you see the gathering that took place of the, the Magi, you see the gathering of the shepherds, but here is where the gathering of his promises, that promise of joy came together. We find Jesus in the manger, you see Mary and Joseph, and you see all the people that are gathered around, but I'll tell you something, folks, why this season is going on. One of the greatest things that we can do is we gather around this message of Christ. That's where the joy is found. There's nothing about Christmas unless you, if you take Christ out of Christmas, there is a lot of happiness. A lot of things can be given and a lot of indebtedness. I was talking to a lady at Home Depot the other day and, and we were joking around as uh, taking something back. I think some Christmas lights we didn't use. I was taking them back and I said, boy, wouldn't it be a great thing if Santa Claus came without a bill? Wouldn't that be awesome? And we got going back and forth. He said, yeah, my nephew, he's wanting a car, you know, and he's already picking that out. And I said, well, uh, Santa Claus will bring him one. The problem is he brings the bill also and said, here, here's your bill that goes along with this. I wish that we would have that where we'd have no bill and we'd think, well, this is going to be a great season of joy. But folks, I'll tell you, joy has nothing to do with what we have. Joy has everything to do with Jesus. The basis of this whole season and the gathering of what we see around the manger, the gathering of what we see of all the promises that come to a culmination in that manger scene, that's a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. What you see in Peter, it says, though you have not seen him, you love him. He is speaking to the believers, those that didn't get a chance to walk with Jesus, those that didn't get a chance to be in face to face contact with him. But as he's writing to the church, he's saying, though you haven't seen him, you love him him we celebrate this gathering that we see around this manger because the gathering that we see is representation of the joy that God sent into this world there's nothing better than when you see a baby that's coming into the world we all get excited and you get to hold a baby except for those who are less and less comfortable holding a baby and that brings great terror to her mom but you find that when we have a baby, everybody's got to hold that baby. Everybody's got to have a little bit of piece of that baby. You got to sniff that baby. You got to have that time with that baby, you know. You get that brand new grandbaby and that poor thing is not going to sleep in his bed for about six months. Because everybody's got to hang on to that baby. Let me tell you something. You remember the time, and I go back to the point where Jesus came into your heart. You remember that joy? Now, I don't want to relate the two too far, but for those grandparents, you remember the first time you grabbed hold of that grandbaby? Just the overwhelming feeling, and you're going, whoosh, this was worth having kids now. <laughs> what a great joy that you got, that you have that. But you remember the time when Jesus Christ came into your heart? Though you have not seen Him, the Bible says you love Him, and even though you do not see Him now, you believe. The gathering of the manger is that gathering of the point of joy that you find in your heart. And it's that message that's been given to us. And I look at what society's doing with Christmas and how that you go to secular schools and you go to what we see going on around the country and saying you cannot sing songs, anything about Jesus. You can't do it. And listen, folks, they're taking the joy. It's like we love the story of the Grinch who stole Christmas. It has nothing really to do with Jesus, but he stole the whole heart and the purpose away from Christmas. This society today needs to grow another heart and let it get bigger and bigger because we're finding there is no joy. The Muslim religion has no joy. 
I don't know why it's growing, but it is. Even the Jewish religion that's hoping and waiting on a Messiah. The Muslims are hoping and waiting on a Messiah. They're, if you're Iran, that you're ramping up your nuclear program so you can make a Messiah come. Create enough chaos and the Messiah comes is what they believe. And so they're wanting some kind of Messiah to come. But the joy that we have and the gathering around this manger, the gatherings we do at Christmas, is the joy that He has come. He's among us. Even though we have not seen Him, we love Him. Even though you do not see Him, you believe in Him. I love that passage because there is something to that. Even though that when it says in Matthew 2.10, it said that when the, the Magi gathered around, it said they were overjoyed. There was something happening to the, the shepherds' hearts because they were the first ones, the plainsmen, the ones that didn't have anything in life, but they were the ones that God came to and says, look, a Savior has been born. And when they got a chance to see the babe in the manger, they said, yes, there's something awesome. When the, the Magi came, yes, there's something awesome. So when we gather together, folks, and I will tell you, this is a little rabbit trail. When we get together during Christmas, don't just go through the motions. Yes, we gather together because of the joy that we know that's in Christ. That this Christmas message that we have that has been given to us, that have been given that there's the promises of God that have come together in a manger. So we gather around those promises. What is your promise today? Maybe somebody in your family that needs to be saved. Maybe somebody in your family that needs to be healed. God's promises are, they are eternal. And they've been given to us through Jesus Christ. The second thing you find the joy is that in giving. When you have opportunity and you see in this life and you get a chance to give, you'll find there's a great joy in that. How many times have you seen somebody open up a gift that you've given? And, and for those that are really meticulous in the way you pick your presents out, you actually have them in mind instead of just going, hey, that's a good one. Boom, boom. I've gotten into a habit where I'm going and buying the nephew's gifts, and I love because I go to Home Depot or Lowe's and find a gift for them, you know, and it's a lot of fun to do that. Now I'll go through there going, boy, that's just a neat gadget I'd like to have, so I give it to them, you know, and uh, it might not know how to do with it, but it doesn't matter. It's a neat gadget I'd like to have, and, and so I look at it, and I'm like, boy, this is, I, I get excited. Mindy knows that. I, I'll bring it home and say, look, hon, I got it. We can take it back if we need to, and she don't even know what I'm dragging out. It's like, okay, this would be really good right here, and uh, this, this is awesome little gadget tool everybody needs one of these you need about three of them laying around your car your house i mean well you can whip that out and macgyver anything you got great joy you can tell go to lowe's a big boy toy store and or home depot and go through there and you find there's great joy in that but the great joy that we have is not just in this season but it is in the giving it's in what God gave us through Jesus Christ. And I find the Christmas season, it is about giving. How many of you know someone that's in need this Christmas season and your heart goes out to them and you say, we've got to do something. We've got to help them. We've got to give. This season especially is one of those seasons where you find yourself in a, in a, in a quandary because you're kind of like, I want to give you the moon, kids, but uh, you know it comes with a price. I want to give everything we got, but it comes to the price. But you give them those things that you can give. You find yourself in that maturity of giving, and, and you find that as you grow up, everything is about giving. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. You find during this Christmas season, but you always hate that, and, and you got to stuff a few gifts away because somebody's liable to beat you to the giving part. And you got to make sure you got a gift that you can give. You get those surprise gifts, the older you get, you're okay with it. You know, and you have that person that you didn't know they're going to give you a gift and you get it and you're going, oh, I appreciate that, but I ain't got nothing for you. But what we have in this life is that we have an opportunity to give. There's a joy in that. There's something that goes greater. You give away what you have, everything that you have. What you find in the scriptures is that Mary gave of herself when the angel came to her. She had to say yes. You say had to? Well, I say she didn't have to. But when you're given the opportunity to receive Christ, to be the one, the bearer, and you know, think about it, folks. As a young maiden, she had to give of herself and say, okay, this is it. But I also think of Joseph, who had to give of, think about the reputation, think about what was going on there. But he had to give. 
find not only them, but you find that everyone, it's revolving around this in this story. You see the shepherds, they had to give of themselves. They had to give in to the message they heard. The magi, they had to give of themselves to trek years to find this babe, to find this child that had been given. They found him because they gave of themselves to the message. They believed that Messiah was coming. And so in this season of giving, we hope that every kid, you know, everybody's got a toys for tight because we don't want the kids to go without Christmas and toys. I, I, I'm, I'm with them on that. That's why Lowe's is open. But we find ourselves that everything is about giving during this season. That's where joy happens in us and is found in that giving place. Now, the third one of the G's, you might not like the G's, but not only do we live in that gathering point around the promises of God, we live in that giving point of whatever we've been given, we're to give away. And the third part is that, and it sounds kind of selfish during this season because we don't like it, but the getting. The getting. Let's, you can use receive if that getting bothers you. But the G worked better. <laughs> what are you getting this Christmas? Have you ever heard a kid? What you getting for Christmas? What are you getting? You know? And, you know, I, I understand kids. It's not about what, what am I going to give everybody for Christmas? No. What are you getting for Christmas? What you getting there? I love that when you start looking at kids because what they look at and they say, I'm getting this and I'm getting that. You, you, you used to open the J.C. Penny catalog or the Sears catalog and you like, this is what I'm getting for Christmas, you know. And most of the time it was just that picture because it was really impractical. You can tear the picture. Here you go. There's a picture. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Most of us, it's, what you're, it's not about what we're getting, but it is about what you're getting for Christmas. Let me just share just a moment or two what you're getting for Christmas. Because joy is truly found in the getting part. In Luke 4, when Jesus stood up, he said, this is what I've got for you, and this is what the message is. And when he first proclaimed everything about the message, he stood up in Luke 4, and the Scriptures opened up in his first declaration of his public ministry. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Let me tell you, the poor today, you know what you're getting for Christmas? You're getting the richness of Christ. Because he not only gave me the message to preach good news, he said he sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners. So for the captives, you've been set free. Not only that, for the recovery of sight to the blind. To release the oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the year of jubilee. Folks, living on this side of the manger is that of the year of jubilee. Is living in a state of the year of Jubilee because the year of Jubilee meant all your debts have been canceled. Everything has been washed away. Everything that if the 50 year Jubilee was that where there's nobody can come back on you again and say that you owe me because that debt has been canceled. So when Jesus stood up in his first proclamation of public in his ministry, he said, This is what you're getting because of Christmas. I look at it and I wonder in most of us in our lives and I find it fascinating because as a kid we all wondered what we were getting for Christmas and we would talk about it. I'm getting this and it would bring great joy. That day when you'd open it up, I remember my first 10 speed bicycle, man, that was a great thing to get for Christmas and the 20 degree weather was not a great thing to have but that Christmas happened to be cold and you put on the toboggan with the nose nostrils here and it wasn't a pretty sight when you got through at 20 degrees flying down the road. But you find that what you're getting for Christmas as a kid, you're so excited. And that's why when Jesus says to the children, he said, let them come to me. Don't keep them away. But he also told us to keep that childlike faith. You know what you got for Christmas years ago when you received Jesus Christ? It says that though you have not seen Him, you love Him, even though you did not see Him. Now you believe in Him and are filled with inexpressible, glorious joy. What you got for Christmas? You gather around His promises because it came in that babe in the manger. You have an opportunity to know, and I will tell you this, and this thing that you can give for Christmas is your life to God. Reconnect. There's nothing magical about reindeers and 
Santas, and I can tell you what is awesome about a God who gave his son. There's a joy that's planted in us that every one of us have an opportunity to give. But in the getting part, what I find that he has given us, if we believe in him, we've been given the gift of faith. And that faith, that a faith will flow this place of joy. And in that place of joy, it's inexpressible, glorious joy. For you're receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. In other words, that deliverance of your souls. Christmas is that gift that never stops giving. Each year, and this is the great thing, is you get a chance to sit down during the quiet time of this year and check out your joy reservoir. How you doing in your joy has nothing to do with whether you can buy the most extravagant gifts or the least extravagant gifts, whatever it is of your gold. And it's not anything about that. It's not even about the gathering as much as your family or it's not even about how much you can give or afford to give. It's every bit about how much of Christ is in us. How much we can give of ourselves, of Christ. The heavenly message that he gave us is not a message that is shortened in any way. It's a message that throughout time has become, become greater. Let me tell you where joy is found. Joy is not found in the things that we have or the people we're around. Every bit of the relationships that you have are those things that you can carry with you into eternity if you preach the message. But joy is found in, first and foremost, the salvation that Jesus Christ has provided for us. The Bible tells us to remember your first love. Remember the heights in which you have fallen. If there's in your joy reservoir, if it's dry, you put your finger down there and in your joy reservoir of your life, and it is not even slick. The glass is not even slick in your, your glass of joy. Folks, I want to tell you something. Remember your salvation. Remember the reason he sent Jesus into this world. It's not so we can have Christmas trees and reindeers. It's so that we can have the joy of our salvation. When David was speaking, Lord, please return to me the joy of my salvation. He was in the midst of a confession of a bad sins and stuff and falling away from God. The greatest thing that you can do in this Christmas season was to gather around the promise again. Give your heart back to the Lord and you're going to find that your joy reservoir will fill up just like that. And you say, well, I, I, I don't know what that means. Having the joy of your salvation. God has freed us. The Luke 4 has happened, folks. It may not be a reality to you right at this moment, but it has happened. It's the promises of God that have been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Great joy in that. Joy is being saved from our sins. Sins are what so easily entangle us. And I find it in Hebrews, one of the things that it tells us in Hebrews that Jesus said for the joy set before him. And I like that part because that is when he looks. And it's kind of like when he looks down the road of eon of time and says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. A great way to restore your joy during this season. Remember what the season's all about. Fix it upon Jesus. And it says, for the joy set before him endure the cross, scorning his shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I love it for the joy. What was the joy set before him? How can you have joy looking at a cross? You can have joy because he saw you. Because he saw the restoration and the salvation and the freeing of our sins. If you've ever seen someone that's in the degradation of all the things and their, their life has been degraded by what they're encamped in and what's happening in their lives. You've seen the person that has the, the sores on their mouth because they're a drug abuser. You've seen them how they, they're just torn up in their lives and you're going, can't somebody do something? I want to tell you something. 2,000 years ago, the babe in the manger was sent to set us free from our sins. From our stuff, folks. That's the joy of our salvation. But here's where joy is also found. Joy is found because he has set us free from ourselves. Folks, there will never be joy in your life till you get your eyes off yourself and put them upon the maker and the finisher, the author and the finisher of this faith. Who for the joy set before him, because you were set before him. You'll never be happy. You say, well, I'm not a selfish person. I'm really a, a giving person. Where's your joy? Givers are joyful. If we're really giving, if we really are giving, not the assessment against somebody else that don't give as much of their life. Not, don't compare yourself against somebody down here. Compare yourself against Jesus who 
chose to die on a cross for us. That's the comparison we have. Not, oh, Joe Smo over here who don't care about giving. I'm better than he is. There's no joy in that. The joy is in, look, I'm looking at the author and the finisher of my faith, and he is showing me how to give of myself. You can free me of myself by giving during this season. So not only is he giving us joy is found in our salvation. Joy is found that we're saved from our sin. Joy is found from being delivered from ourselves. And then the last thing, joy is truly found when we're getting free of this worldly entanglements. There's a lot of things that happen in our life, a lot of things that go on, a lot of things that are happening in your life. But joy is truly found when we get free of those entanglements of this world. I really believe that each one of us, and we can find in this passage that we read just a little bit earlier, in 1 Peter, for he says he's going to give us his inexpressible and glorious joy for you receiving the goal of our faith. What is the goal of our faith? What is the goal of this manger? It's the salvation of our souls. Joy is found as a deposit of the Holy Spirit for those who have been saved from their sins, from their selves, and are being set free from this world. The preliminary of this life is getting us ready for heaven. Now, folks, I want to tell you something. The funniest cartoon and the saddest cartoons I remember seeing was the, and they were sitting there and they're talking. They had this picture of people standing on clouds. I don't know about clouds, but they're standing on clouds. And they're saying, what's wrong with old George over there? And he's over there just sad. And he said, well, it's time for his favorite to show on TV, and he's missing it. We're so entangled with this world that we forget that this is not all there is. The reason Jesus came to save us is not just to give us a better existence here, but it's to give us something greater to come. That's where our focus is. And that doesn't mean we become so heavenly minded we're no earthly good. That means that we're inviting people as aliens and strangers here to come go along. That's the joy of giving, that we know the salvation that God has given us. Now here's where I want to challenge you in your walk. How is your faith in Christ? Are you got your eyes on the goal of your salvation? What's the goal of being saved? Is it so you can have a happy life here? Ten ways of success? Fifteen ways to do this? Sixteen? No! The goal of your salvation is one day that we get to see Him face to face. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him! That's our goal! Is Jesus. And folks, when we put our eyes upon Him and keep our eyes fixed on Him, the joy is there. The joy is there. You can usually find, and I, and I love it because when you get out here in this season and everybody's busy and the closer you get to Christmas, the more hectic it gets and people get more wiry and things going on. You can stop people and give them a little bit of the joy that you have as a Merry Christmas or just stop them and say, look, can I pray with you? It looks like you're kind of having a tough day today. Can I pray with you? And, and you know what? They may say no, but you know by giving of that opportunity, most people will say, yeah, especially here in the South, you're good. But I have found that the joy of this season is found in faith and the promise that we look in the manger and we see that promise that God has given us that I'm going to save you, but I'm going to save you through my son, not through your efforts. So you'll boast all about it. But because of my son who dies for you, who has died for you, the goal of your salvation is not just a happy existence here. It's a joy filled, inexpressible joy of the goal of our salvation being set free from even these earthly entanglements. Take a quick look in the manger, figure out. You still got Christ in Christmas? I don't want to buy into the whole commercialization. It's all right to give gifts, all right to do all these things we do around the trappings of Christmas. But if we ever take the eyes off of Jesus, we're going to miss the joy of this season. Because he is the joy of our salvation. Let's pray together. Father, I just thank you for your hope and your life you give us. I ask you, Father God, that you will just show us those things that you just allow your Holy Spirit just to speak to us. And just allow us in this place today to be transformed by your joy. And Lord, when we step out of this place today, I ask you, Lord, that you will let us see our, our joy overflowing because you have saved us from our sin. Every one of your promises are yes in Christ Jesus. We speak the amen. We say we agree with those promises. And Lord, we thank you for the babe in the manger. We thank you for giving us life. 
And Lord, we truly thank you because it's an amazing grace that we have today. And we bless you, Lord, for giving us this hope. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus. Let me ask you before we stand. If there's anyone here today that does not know Jesus Christ, the greatest thing you can do is give your heart to Jesus. Or if you have been at a distance and there is no joy in your life, the greatest step that you can do is to take that step of repentance and say, God, I'm going to come back. I need to be there. I need some joy back in my life. That's a step you need to take today. As we sing this closing hymn, if you want to make that step, I invite you to come and let's pray down here at the altar area and just ask the Lord to restore the joy of your salvation. Or if you never experienced Jesus, experience him for the first time this year. Let's stand together as we sing Amazing Grace. Let's play something. Amazing Grace, sound that saved a wretch like me. Father, we thank you for the blessing that you give us and the hope of life in Christ Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, that as we walk from this place today, that you will allow us to walk in your joy and let your life flow from us so the world may know the good news of Jesus Christ. We thank you for that, Father, and bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week. Give the joy of Jesus to somebody. Yes, ma'am.